So uh, welcome to this talk. Uh, the title is Practical Tips for Multiplayer Game Development. And I also have a subtitle, What I Learned from Doing It All Wrong. So um, we're going to see five practical tips today. So one is, uh, you know, it's about why it's a good idea to have a common code base for server and clients. Uh, second one is about uh, running multiple instances uh, in Godot and some of the new tools that also came with uh, 4.3. We're going to talk about uh, managing the bandwidth uh, with multiplayer visibility, just you know, very, uh, very basic stuff. And spawning levels with the multiplayer spawner. And finally, hosting your game servers uh, on the cloud. So some of the options available. And if, uh, if I manage to time everything right, we're also going to have five minutes of Q&A. Yeah, the thing with uh, Godot multiplayer is it's you know it's quite new. It it was uh, it changed a lot in 4.0, and so I'm always learning new things. So I I, I really um, I would be really happy to uh, to see any other tips uh, at the end if uh, if you have any. So I just want to spend a few words about me. Um, I started using Godot in 2022, and I made an add-on for Hatora, which is something. Uh, it's a bit similar to W4 Cloud for multiplayer, but but not quite. Um, and uh, I'm showcasing uh, In Good Faith, uh, which is actually not a multiplayer game, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, so why, why am I here? You know, how did I end up here? Um, well, a few years ago, I, was, uh, I, I met this uh, researcher from Delft, and he had a game where you played as a civil servant uh, in the municipality, and you, know, you had to decide uh, whether data sets uh, should be open or not, data sets made by the municipality. And so it was like a training game. And you know, we started like, uh, oh, maybe we should do some kind of digital support for the game, because it was quite a complex game to play in person. Uh, and then you know, the pandemic happened, and it turned into a, like a multiplayer project. And so the first video game I made was a multiplayer game. And <laughs> I, I did it in Construct 3 and Firebase. And I literally, I mean, I literally cried while I was doing it, because it was, it was really awful. Uh, I don't know, I haven't used Costra in a while, so maybe now the, the tooling is better, but uh, yeah, it was a bit rough. Um, so uh, yeah, you, uh, you, know, you fetch these files and you need to like stamp and sign them, think like papers please, but multiplayer. Uh, and I thought, you know, I thought this was like such an offensive game, like I told my supervisor, I was like, we are inviting civil servants to play this game and we are saying that their entire job is to like stamp and sign files all day. And, and, you know, I played it with like 70 civil servants and then some people came to me and they were like, you know, this is exactly like my daily job. Like, um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in a really small percentage of people, at least from the community poll, that like, I've never used any, I, I've used Construct and that, that's it. I learned how to code in Godot. So, uh, GScript is, is yeah, the only language I, I really know. And so, yeah, multiplayer game development is my, <laughs> is my passion, but please take my tips with like a grain of salt. Um, so why why am I giving this talk? I mean, <laughs> there's I I I've been doing some you know like support codes with indie developers and and it's really quite um, a steep hill to climb yeah to get into multiplayer sometimes and I think a big part of that uh, at least my impression is is not because of the way uh, the multiplayer API is designed in Godot but it's because the, there is really like a lack of documentation. Um, a lack of tutorials and just kind of and people you know enter multiplayer development with kind of like um, uh, a different mental mental model than what Godot actually kind of expects, right? So I hope that you know we're going to talk about a lot of tips and I hope in in, in doing that we um, we cover also this kind of uh, mental model part. So tip number one: uh, a common code base for uh, for server and uh, clients. So, um, you know, I, I came from web development and, um, and I thought, uh, you know, there's client code and there's server code. And these are two very different things. Like you shouldn't have client code on your server, you shouldn't have server code on your client. And, and you know, maybe you can have like web sockets or something, you, you know, you can connect the two and maybe you can, I don't know, like run Python on your, on your server. And, you know, most of my games are like, UI games, so I don't do like physics or simulation or like that. So I was like, you know, wh why do I need to run Godot on my server? Like that seems like really unnecessary. In fact, I, you know, uh, one of the things I did when I was remaking the game I showed you before in Godot uh, was I had this, this separate code base 
And actually, for the game logic, I used the uh, Phoenix framework. It, uh, I don't know, uh, is anyone familiar with Elixir? No, okay, good, because you should never use it to make games. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I, I had no idea. <laughs> so, uh, a few reasons why it's really bad to have, or it, at least it, it, it makes everything more complicated to have like separate code bases, right? So, you need to keep everything in sync across machines that know nothing about each other, essentially. And this is even more true, you know, if you're running a completely different, uh, yeah, if you're running Python or something else on your, on your server. Uh, yeah, what about physics simulation, you know, like maybe you don't even have the game map on your server or whatever, or like it's completely different. And also local multiplayer, right? Say you want to release to mobile, okay, how do you run the game server if you want to, or, or maybe you, um, yeah, how do you, how do you do like multiplayer matches? It's, it's, it's a lot more complicated if you have like a separate code base for the, for the server. So, uh, this is kind of the, I think the, the easiest way to go about it is to just run uh, Godot everywhere and then have a separate build uh, for, your, uh, for your server. But the code is exactly the same. So same, you know, same repository, same everything, you're, you're not changing a single thing. And you can even, you know, it doesn't mean that your players need to have a machine running the server, you can also be on the, on the cloud. And we're gonna talk about that later. So just, uh, you know, first thing you do, you know, you make a host button, you make a connect button, and on your host button, you call create server, you give it a port, and on your connect button, you call create client. Easy peasy. So uh, what happens then is when they connect, they get assigned uh, unique uh, multiplayer IDs, and uh, the server is always, oop, the server is always uh, uh, number one, right? So the other thing is, Everything in Godot is local until you replicate it. So just because we connected them, it doesn't mean that they started transferring data. So if you look at the, uh, uh, oops, if you look at the, um, uh, at the profiler, yeah, there's, there's not going to be any, any data exchange. Uh, so not even, you know, multiplayer authority, whatever, you, it's, all, it's all manual. So how do we do replication uh, in Godot, yeah? So we have three main ways. One is RPCs. Uh, the other one is the multiplayer spawner, and then we have the, the multiplayer synchronizer. And I'm going to talk a bit about that as we go along. So, um, let's say that uh, I'm making a, a game, yeah, and uh, I want to, and it's a multiplayer game, and I'm using my multiplayer spawner to, to, to spawn my player, and I want to test if it works, yeah? So if it was a single player game, right, I would just press play and I can play test my game, right? But it's multiplayer. I need multiple instances, right? I need to run multiple copies of the game on my, on my machine. Now, since, uh, yes, it's 4.0, we have this feature about uh, running multi multiple instances. If you go to debug, customize run instances, and uh, you can run as many as you like. And now what happens is, uh, yeah, you have two windows. One, you press host, you're moving your player. The other one, you press connect and you're playtesting your multiplayer game, right? So we, we have a starting point, we have a host button, we have a connect button, we have multiple windows that we can use to playtest our game. But let's go a bit further, you know, because it's, it's very annoying to like constantly, you know, uh, press host, connect, you know, maybe I'm playtesting it 10, 12, uh, 20 times a day and I'm always like clicking there. So uh, how, how do we automate this uh, further? Well, uh, we can set a few parameters here. So the first one is uh, there's a column for feature tags. This is new, this is in uh, 4.3. So I can specify dedicated server as a feature flag. Okay, so let's say that I'm making a game where I have a dedicated server and two peers. I will put three uh, instances. Uh, one, I set the feature tag dedicated server. And this is the same as uh, exporting my game as a dedicated server. So it's the same code, the only thing that changes is it has no UI, because yeah, we're trying to save resources, right? Because uh, maybe I'm running it on the cloud and yeah, you need to pay for it. So what do you do in, in your code? Well, you write, you know, if we have the feature dedicated server, then uh, let's press the host button. Otherwise, let's press the connect button. And now, uh, Oh, and the other thing you can do is you can also specify launch arguments. So in this case, I want a player one and a player two. And in my code, I can use this uh, function, get command line arguments. 
to access uh, uh, those arguments. And uh, you see now when I run it, it automatically connects, and I have a player one and a player two. And I don't know, it's like a few seconds, but like you know, if you do it for a year, it's, it's some time. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and the other thing you can do is you can also uh, set it as the uh, title wind in the in the title uh, of the window. Yeah, player two and the multiplayer ID. And something I also do is to uh, use push debug so that I, I can see it here that this is uh, the, the debugger for, for player one. Because sometimes, you know, you get these three sessions and I'm like, which one is which? And I just print it there. So I don't know, thought it might be interesting. <laughs> so uh, uh, another, another topic I want to cover today is kind of is, uh, changing scenes uh, in, in multiplayer. Yeah, because that, that can be uh, quite, quite painful. So what happens is you call change scene and then Every, every peer gets there at a different time, right? You, you never know who is getting there first. And this can cause problems because let's say that one client gets there first and maybe they start to call an RPC that is only for, uh, for second level. And uh, you get into trouble because uh, you know, it, the, the server is still on level one, it, he doesn't know what that is and you get an error. So in Godot, whenever you, you synchronize stuff, you replicate stuff, yeah, then the, the nodes, especially with RPCs or the synchronizer, et cetera, the nodes should be on the same path. Right, so, um, so the, my tip number 3A is to just put it, put it all in one scene, if you can. So let's say you have a 3D game and maybe some UI for the, for the start menu or whatever. Uh, just, just hide the UI and, you know, and have it all in one scene. Um, if you really need to have multiple levels, uh, then just spawn them with the, with the multiplayer spawner. This is, uh, I just discovered this while I was uh, researching the talk. Uh, there is a really nice blog post by Fabio Alessandrelli about this with a working example. So, and this is what the, the entire the uh, what the the project here is based on. So, we are using a multiplayer spawner to uh, replicate spawnable nodes from the authority uh, to the multiplayer peers. And so, what you can do is you place your multiplayer spawner um, uh, here in your uh, uh, yeah in the same level as the as the level node. So, we're going to spawn our levels under the level node. And so uh, we set the spawn path to the level node and we set the spawn limit to one because we only want one level at a time. And then we add to the auto spawn list all our uh, possible levels. Uh, so then, you know, if, uh, if we are the, the server and we have authority over the multiplayer spawner, then we, uh, uh, yeah, we can, we can spawn the, the scene and, and add it. We just call add child and then the, the multiplayer spawner is gonna handle the rest. And you can synchronize, uh, yeah, and, and you can use a multiplayer synchronizer to synchronize the, pro the position of all your various objects in your level. So just a multiplayer synchronizer. Uh, these are our properties. Uh, and, uh, and the really nice thing about this setup with the multiplayer spawner and the synchronizer is that you can also easily handle reconnections. So if you, uh, if you have a player that uh, leaves the game and comes, uh, comes back in, you're not gonna get any errors it's just the spawner is going to spawn its thing, the synchronizer is going to synchronize, everything is fine. So you can see on the remote, um, we have our world that gets added as a, as a child. So uh, next tip is about, uh, oh, and something I wanted to mention also is, uh, some, uh, I just heard this while I was outside, but uh, so what you can do is you can put in your remote uh, a node and give it the name of the, uh, of the um, uh, give it the, the multiplayer ID as a, as a name for the node, so that you can, uh, you can tell that this is the remote for that specific session, right? So you, when you're debugging, it makes things uh, uh, easier. Are you following me so far? Is it, yeah, okay. Is it, is it a bit boring? Is it like, too, uh, do you already know this stuff, or is it, uh, it's good? Okay. So, uh, managing your bandwidth. Just a simple tip. So I was working on this game uh, where, you know, we had a uh, hundred enemies um, in an arena, and I'm really bad at this game, so I'm gonna die immediately. I think also the game is a bit too hard, but yeah. Um, but it's just a big arena with a bunch of zombies. <laughs> and uh, this this game is called uh, Mage 2K. So. Um, 
you see here, we were using like really a lot of bandwidth. Like uh, here is about 120, it was going up to 180. It was really a lot of bandwidth. Because with, uh, with 100 enemies, you need to really think about what you're synchronizing. And so you, know, you can do many things to optimize. Like I'm not going to cover all of them, of course. Uh, but one really simple thing I did was to use, uh, to toggle multiplayer visibility on and off, right? So I put a visible on-screen notifier. Uh, and then we, uh, uh, we, would, we were turning on and off the, uh, the, 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 multiplayer, the, the multiplayer visibility based on whether the, the enemies were visible or not. And so you can see here in the network profiler, if we, if we, uh, if we use this, uh, this RPC to turn multiplayer visibility on and off, the, the bandwidth goes down significantly. Like you can still optimize a bit more, and there's, there's a lot of stuff that uh, needs to be optimized, but it's a first step. So final tip, uh, this went faster than I thought, so we're gonna have some time to talk, which is nice, uh, is to let someone else do the system administration, yeah? So, um, so I talked about earlier about how, um, uh, yeah, you should run your, the, same, uh, the same code on, on server and, and clients, but the question is, okay, like, let's say I have my game and you know, I want people to play it, like how, you know, where do I put the game servers? And I think it's um, one mistake I did was to kind of try to do my own system, system administration, yeah, maybe have my own VPS, um, run my own thing over there, but it's just, it's just so much work, uh, and it's, it's really not worth it. You're doing everything else but developing your game. So, um, so nowadays, there's a really quite a few companies that uh, provide something called uh, server orchestration. So this is, um, this is a service where they open up um, a uh, REST API for you that you can connect with uh, via HTTP. And so let's say that you have a client that wants to uh, play your game and says, you know, I want to play online, can you make a lobby for me? And then the, the server orchestrator, the company, yeah, you're connected via HTTP, says, okay, I'll make a new server for you. And they will take a build of your game, a server build of your game, they will put it in a Docker container and they run it for you in the cloud. Yeah, and then they just give you an address. They say, hey, this is, this is the address for the server, this is the port, just connect to it and you can play online. And you just use the, the usual, you know, Godot code to, uh, to connect to your, uh, yeah, to, to connect to a peer, and you're, uh, you have a multiplayer game. And uh, you don't need to think about any sysadmin or anything, and then once you're done, the server disappears, and, uh, and you only pay for what you use. Right, or, or almost. But, yeah. And there's a bunch of companies now doing this, and the really nice thing with, uh, that I'm seeing in Godot is that there's, there's more and more companies also making GDScript SDKs, so that you can kind of easily use these solutions without coding your own like REST API, essentially. So you can just call like, uh, for example, uh, uh, Hatora, create a lobby, and you, you use the await keyword, and you wait for the lobby to be created, and, and then you connect. And, and these are kind of the main solutions in terms of server orchestration that I, I know about. Uh, there's, uh, there's Rivet, there's W4 Cloud, there's uh, Hatora. I made the, the add-on uh, for, for, for Hatora, and they, they, they focus specifically on server orchestration uh, rather than the whole, um, the whole package. Let's say W4 Cloud offers additional features, yeah, like a game backend, uh, a database, and also uh, matchmaking, I think. Atora is a bit more like, uh, yeah, just kind of uh, focus on, on one thing and doing it well. And, uh, and then there's, uh, there's also PlayFab. There's, there's really a lot of options and they all have really nice uh, GScript SDKs. And you can also use a combination of these. You don't need to use just one product, like you can, you can combine multiple, you can use the, you know, the, uh, the matchmaking for, for W4 and you know, the servers from PlayFab or, or whatever you like. Um, so that's it for my uh, <laughs> multiplayer tips. Uh, these are some credits. Um, yeah, I relied heavily on also on the scene replication blog post by Fabio Alessandrelli, and um, there's also some some really nice uh, uh, Reddit posts and YouTube videos that you can uh, uh, you can watch later if you if you want to uh, uh, see more. So yeah, uh, we can open the floor to, uh, uh, to questions or also other tips that you have if you want to share, I would be really happy.